beautiful weather we could find. I was thinking, Desi, when you were on that first day walking in to drive your first bus, was any part of your brain thinking, I'm going to do this for nearly 50 years? I know it. No. <laughs> Not a chance. I would have honestly thought maybe two years, three years. Right. When you're in a company like Dublin Bus, it's not so much the, the Dublin Bus company, it's the fellas that you work with. Right. Um, they're like family. And they, they've been saying to me, oh, it must be great now you're retiring. But I'm trying to explain to them, I'm sort of happy I'm retiring, and I'm not. It's like you're leaving your family. Yes. Yeah. They're a great bunch of lads. Now, there's some of them, you, I'd say, would you treat them as family. But there's some of them, like, I that actually put them in the orphanage just but that's <laughs> I mean you're going to get that you're going to get that kind of thing in any family you know but I, mean? I just finished the book on, on the Beatles kind of last year and that feeling that you know they all feel in their gut that they're not going to be the same come the day that they all walk away from each other and as much as there, there's a sort of joy and relief in that there's also this huge kind of pain that this is no longer the gang this is no longer the team well I was told I was told yesterday don't be a stranger and that's a nice thing like for, yeah. for the fellow workers to say listen you're still part of the family and all that I know that when I'm doing my charity work that if I get down there with a book of tickets I throw them onto the canteen table they're sold <laughs> or if I'm look, collecting money for mental health or whatever I decide to do they'll give me money they're a great bunch well we did mention before we, we started the camera that on Sunday such a huge turnout and I do think a part of it everybody's delighted when somebody that they you know know and, and like and maybe love it's just happy and healthy when they retire because there's so so often people step away from a job because they can't do it anymore because they're not well. But but you're you're in great fine fettle. So well, that's a, very much. That's a happy kind of moment to be able to sort of step out of the ring while you're still able to fight. Well, as we said before, I mean I've gone through. There was a lady over there, and her daughter was there, and her daughter's daughter was there, and they were going. <laughs> you used to bring me, and I go like, dear God, I'm. I'm <laughs> You sort of feel antiquated, but at the same time, there's this nice, warm feeling inside that I've achieved something nice. I've gone through three generations, or three and a half generations. Well, that's thousands of connections. You know, you know, maybe like I don't know. You could even say by the time you get to each kid who has a kid who has somebody else, and and, and people just who just knew you for a short period of time working here. That's thousands of people who would just recognise you in a lineup and say, "Oh, that's the guy I know from." That's kind of sweet. You, you mean, Paul, 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 what you actually say is, is that the fellow with the curly hair and the ear? And he's trying to say, oh, no, it's not that now. But that's, that's what I was describing. I mean, if right. somebody wrote in and say, there's a driver on the 84 and he did such and such. And yeah. you say, I don't know his name, but he's the guy with the curly hair and the ear. And he, so it, it, it sort of became that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. there is the connection. They do recognise you. And that's just, you know, whatever way you might look, there's still that recognition thing, factor of saying, this is the guy that I, I know. Well, I'm not really the, re the sort of shy, <laughs> retiring type, am I? I mean, I'm hanging well, out the window. you're retiring, but not shy. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> hanging out the window going, you know, the usual. But anyway, yeah. That, the, the hair, the, it's, it's, I don't know, I know with uh, Bob Ross now, he would, the famous painter, he would he would perm his hair and became his look. Were you, did you How look like this today? Well, say, I'm say say I'm my hair, <laughs> I'd slap you on. <laughs> but the, the first day you started, I don't know whether you would say, well, you look the same or whether well, this is, you know, just as you naturally we all evolve, we, we I go bald, somebody else goes for red, whatever. No, well, I'll tell you what happened though. I was here, I started the 13th of January 1975 as a bus conductor, and my hair was like at that time sort of a bob, you know, it's just there. Right. And then over the years, I started to let it grow. And the company were at this, if you, about, you, know, you know, men don't yeah. have long hair, so eventually I just let it grow and grow and grow. And then I decided to, uh, I decided then that I wanted to get my ears pierced. That happened in 76, and that was really, nobody had ever done anything like that before. And then the inspector said to me one day, he says, you can't be doing that. But then they let clippies in. Women became conductor right. clippies, as we call them. And they wore earrings, and I said, well, look at this yeah. is sexist if you don't so eventually just left me alone so I had long hair and earrings and was there any kind of was there any kind of grief or tension when you made that move I mean you think um, about it was, was a bit, yeah, yeah like it was a bit right. like uh, rebelish I suppose you could call it you know. and you're okay with that weren't you oh, oh bloody <laughs> right I was oh, anything to be different anything to be different so that point where you're there, there you go you start 1975 you think maybe by 78 79 you'd be somewhere else what, was there a turning point or was it a gradual kind of seduction that you thought, I actually love it here, I want to stay? Um, 
I think it was the thing of meeting people. Right. Um, different, like, <clears throat> every day was different. Every day had something. Like, it's, it's like somebody says, oh, I'm a professional driver, say, and I can do... But every day someone will do something stupid in front of you. You're never... Every day was different. And, right. and that was great. I mean, that was... No. We should say, and, and people like Tom Fortune have pointed out very quickly that you've done a huge amount of charity work, and you know the the the, 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 the walk from Wicklow Town right up to, to, to Bray, and then you know the, the bikers for you know for suicide. What was this part of your life? Do you think whether you you'd been involved socially like this in, in the bus driving was it always that it comes from your family? Whether it's just something you'd always done? It was, it was family. The charity was family oriented. Right. Back in the sixties, there was a chap in Cherry Orchard Hospital actually in Baldoyle Hospital and that's where they used to treat polio and it was a, a fund set up called it's actually called the Little Willie Fund really. right. and, and it was a little guy and he was on he had steels and, he, and crutches and we used to go down to Arklow, Wicklow Greystones, Bray, Kalini Donnerty and we used to have church collections and it started from that I was only about I'd say it was, that was in 1963 so I was only about 8 or 9 at that time and he sort of people out there and for any reason they're less fortunate than us yeah. and it's just I just thought I felt good when I, when I collected the money and handed it in and I, it was a nice feeling and I, I still like that feeling I like the feeling of helping somebody it did it did sort of take on a whole kind of life of its own that, that you became very well known for it. I don't know whether there was a, a, a kind of you know again was there a moment where you realised that this is something I want to do for Forever, or whether it was just a natural, organic growth of more and more events and more fundraising. And well, the lads in the job call me Bono, and I'd swear for them to keep that up. But I, I mean, anything but. But uh, it, the, it's, it's just a thing of helping, you right. know. And if if you help somebody on the way through life, and he's he or she mm. turns the corner, you've achieved everything. Right. But if you, if you can keep doing it and keep helping. No, definitely, I'll keep doing it. Well, that's the thing. I'm going to say you're, you're probably still going to be active in, in, in those fronts because, you know, this is part of your life. As much as the driving was, this will be a, a big part of it. Well, I, I said to my wonderful wife, I said to her, they think they've heard the last of me. That ain't, <laughs> ain't going to happen. So, no, I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll keep doing it because so, it's fun and it's, it's, it's a feel-good factor. As well. I think in any industry, you know, when you live through 47 years of doing anything, whether you're a musician or whether you're a, a, a plumber or whatever... I don't know whether there was ups and downs, whether the, the, the job itself got tough at times, whether I don't know whether it's always been pretty much okay with you or um well you, you'll always have awkward moments. I mean you're dealing with different people who have different problems. I mean you have drink. Yeah. I, mean, the, I always found that if you said no to somebody with drink, they that was like a red light for them to start yeah. with you. Um if you agree with them, they're confused and they'll sit down and leave you alone. And then you have this new problem of drugs, which right. is very, very sad. I mean, I know well, people. When you say it's new now, that drugs just seem to be part of society since the sixties and seventies. But you feel it's it's a little bit more in the last. Oh decade yeah! Oh yeah! Okay. Oh my right. God! Definitely. Um, it's it's a it's a very very big issue. But then again, drink is a very big issue too. I don't drink, yeah. and people like drink is a drug, and yeah. yet you know, and it's all free. But look at I'm not an expert in that field, so. But that, that side of it too, that, that again, you've been sort of noted for the fact that you're almost a counsellor at times where you, you would be able to talk with people who are slightly on the edge in that moment. They might be, as you say, drunk, they might be on drugs, so they're not necessarily thinking straight. But that's got to be a skill as well, to be able to just make someone feel calm and get them to, you know, take it easy and, and to basically get them home or get them where they want to go. And Let's face it, I mean, if somebody is upset and all they want is a friendly hand of you, but it's like... Yeah. It's like when I, I used to find out when somebody passed and they go to a funeral, I do often wonder, did, like, putting your hand on their shoulder, hugging them, does it help? And then when my father died, I remember a friend of mine going, he put his hand on my shoulder, he said, Desi, think now, yeah. And it sort of lifted that, you know, that, for, for that minute, I'm not on my own, there's somebody there. And I think it's the same for them, you know, it has to be the same for them. I do think, when you mention that, I do think that we're going through a period in time in history where, where that's sort of more needed than ever I know that it's slightly difficult to put your hand on someone's shoulder at the moment but even just that connection of just saying to somebody how are you doing or, or making that effort to, to connect I don't know whether you've noticed that with the buses whether there's been a sort of a people are a little bit on edge I think now with the isolation they've had to live through for, for so long well the funny part about last Sunday we were talking about last Sunday when I was on the bus 
Yeah, I mean, all that went out the window. <laughs> you know, it was hugging, it was like a hassle. And it felt good, I tell you. Yeah. It felt good. I mean, we're a nation of huggers. Yes. And we're a nation of, you can't say feelers. I mean, that's the thing. You know what I mean? um, There's quite a few of those, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. We're a nation of handshakers, of huggers. And, and that's where we are. And to take that away from our society would be absolutely horrible. Now, the last two questions. Were you shocked by the turnout? Because when you look at the photographs and you look at, you know, people are, are it's like, you know, 20, 30, 40 people at bus stops just waiting for you to pull up so they can give you a hug or say hello to you and all that. Uh, you must have been expecting some people, but it seemed to be a I, lot of yes. people out. And um, yeah, I, like, I, I, I had heard we're going to do them. Down the rain, the well, well, that's the end of that. And um, the people still for an hour because I got yeah. caught up out and Greystones and we're coming out or in uh, cool. Cool and Newcastle yeah. and I stopped to say hello, thanks very much and by the time I got to Greystones then they were, they were fairly <laughs> drowned and got to love them but, yeah. like, but I do want to say one thing I want to thank Kieran Hayden and I want to thank JP Conley and his partner Sandra um, she's only new Vanguard here in Greystones I want right. to thank them because they brought us through which is lovely and yes. it was yeah it was really great but I want to thank everybody including yourself yeah, yeah. everybody for the send off the guard you ever helped you home before oh lot of times <laughs> I remember when I was a young lad they'd say oh it's all go home and you went home you didn't back chat them in those days finally the last question would be have you got a certain sort of plan in mind that as well as you know you do some charity work still and all that but you've got a lot of time now to do nothing if you want to do nothing I don't know what oh, you've no, got oh no I couldn't do that gee oh right. no it's very hard to kill it's very hard to kill these students right. moving target I'll be moving no I am yeah. I've been offered a few jobs and right. I'm going to I'm, I'm I'm going to take up one of them because um, it's dealing with special needs kids, bringing right. them to school and bringing them home. And it's a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours in the afternoon, five days a week, and not having summer holidays like they have. So yeah, you know, nicely done. Heavily. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, as I said very very happy retirement and we will hopefully see you uh, if you're going to be active still that's great we'll see you around oh, I'll be here don't you worry you'll see me go mind the bike rock and roll